Hello everybody, we are Werecats and we are doing a social distance garden gig. Stay away Three from songs me. and we hope you will enjoy it. Um, our first song is called Alien and this was written because Pip and I invariably often get asked where are you from originally and then we say our respective London abodes and they go no 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 where are you really from like you know you don't look like you're from London where are your ancestors from Phil I need to know it's really important <laughs> you don't need to know that shit because <laughs> right. even I don't know I haven't got a bloody clue <laughs> okay <laughs> Marcelo, who's over there, you can't see him. Um, it's called Asbury Castle. He lives at Asbury Castle until today when he's moving out. So, uh, this is dedicated to him. Thank you, Marcelo, for helping us out. You're the best. You are um, the best. Goes a little something like this one, two, three, four. I want to go to the Thank you. 
house shows as well. There's Ashley Khan's so we did house show fest and we had like gigs in that house that right there. But um, we thought we'd do this one in the garden because you know, got to stay a metre apart, wear your mask, all that crap. Have, one, not crap. have one friend in the Important. audience. Yes, and we have uh, Lucy Orr is our one fan. Lucy, give us a woo. See, Yay! we do have a fan. Um, Lucy's the only person that matters, so we're very pleased that she's here. Ah! Exactly. This one's for Lucy. It's called mansplaining. She's not a man. No, she doesn't explain either. No, she doesn't do mansplaining. She hates people that do mansplaining, like we do. Anyway, here goes. <laughs> over the fence and thank you for not raining <laughs> hi everybody my name is sarah and i'm the organizer of today's punks for justice event thank you so much for being here i'm so excited to share all this great music with you They're a really amazing nonprofit. They've been around since 1989, and their main focus is on ending mass incarceration and excessive punishment in the U.S. If any of you have heard of this book, Just Mercy, or maybe seen the movie that came out fairly recently based on this book, it's written by Brian Stevenson. He was the founder of EJI, 
and also the director of it now. He's an amazing person. The book and movie talk a lot about his work to free innocent people from prison. Um, but his organization also just does so many great things for to challenge racial and economic injustice. I'll be sharing the link and more information about EJI throughout this event today, but I, I hope that you can chip in. Even if it's just a few bucks, that would really help for this. And then finally, the second main reason I wanted to do the event was I wanted to bring more support and give more of a voice to or an extra platform, I guess you could say, to people of color in punk and ska music. I'm going to share links throughout of how to find their music, how to find their merch. Please go buy something. If you hear something you like today, go buy something from them. We've really got to support them. I hope you enjoy all the music, and I'll probably see you a little bit later in the broadcast. Thanks again for listening. This is the, the second um, of, of the, um, the album that Pitchfork gave 4.5 on. I was going to say something, but never mind. <laughs> uh, yeah. Alright. Scott, look what you've done. <laughs> Five years. Rock hey! <laughs> <laughs> Look what you done! Look what you done! There will never be anyone like you. Look what you done! Look what you done! Show you up, you know. There's a lot of people in this world that are gonna try to shut you up, you know. Look on the bright side, look on the bright side. People in this world that don't try hard enough, you know. There's a lot of people in this world that are gonna try to show you up, you know, you know. There will never be anyone like you, you know, you know. There will never be anyone like you. Yeah. It's the strangest thing in the world to me. I was telling the officers the truth, and they took my words and they twisted it. 
I said, I'm going to go to the cops, and I'm going to tell them what I saw, and I'll be home before my mom gets back. <laughs> I came home seven years later. My name is Yusef Salam. I'm one of the uh, Central Park Five. We were in the park, and there was a lot of things that people were doing, a lot of mischief making, uh, people throwing rocks at cars, you know, uh, harassing people. The things that I saw that night should have given me an indication to leave. The next day, I was told that police officers were looking for me. And they kept asking me, OK, tell us about the jogger. I'm like, I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. And then it began, OK, tell us your story all over again. There were over 400 articles written. And all of these articles were pulling apart our lives. Donald Trump took out full-page ads in New York City's newspapers calling for the reinstatement of the death penalty, specifically for our case. In my trial, they said Yusef Salam doesn't have a written or videotaped confession, but the others do. This is what some of the others has said about his involvement. And as a result of that, I was convicted. They sent me up to a place called Harlem Valley. We were there for a crime that we didn't commit. And you know, here we were looking at officers. They looked like bodybuilders. Some of them had tattoos of black and brown babies with nooses around their necks on their arms. It was almost like a signal, like, a, like I'm not going to tell you how bad it's going to be. Just look at my tattoos. You know, get out of line and we will bury you up here. When I came home from prison, I was branded a rapist. For years, I would be walking around in this fog and, you know, just trying to put one foot in front of the other and figure life out again. And then 13 years later, the truth comes out in, 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 in the most amazing way. When the police found out about Matias Reyes's story, about the facts that he told them, they knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that he raped the Central Park jogger. And when they finally said that they were dropping the charges, it was the happiest day of my life. Nelson Mandela said, being angry, being bitter is like drinking poison and expecting your enemy to die. It doesn't do anything to the person. It does everything to you. But I'm still haunted. Being free is free. Like, you're free from all of the things that held you back. I'm not free like that. Shopping when we got up to the line Police talk, began 
too bright. Wapiser told us to point to citrus for some drugs that they might find. And then I said, Wapiser, please, we have no more. Drugs we smoked them all before. We got to say, Lizo, please let us go. Under my seat this whole time was an edible. Couldn't find a thing. Officer was pissed and he began to scream like this. Roll my boat now as fast as you can. Get all your shit and put it back in the van. Decided to go inside and search them cavities. Then I said, Officer, please wait, that no more. Drugs we smoked them all before. We got to stay nice, so please let us go. Under my seat this whole time Was an edible
Material support supports EJI and all of those who are at the forefront of fighting the racist system of mass incarceration in the United States. Now is the time to unite with struggles all over the world against racism, imperialism, and fascism. The people have woken up to the reality that this system does not work for us and no longer will we allow ourselves to be slaves to a system that profit off of our bodies. We must fight for liberation for all. Black Lives Matter, activism is not terrorism. We're material support and this is Cop Collar.
Hey amigos, we're picking up the protest from San Antonio, Texas. Very honored to be part of this fundraiser for the Equal Justice Initiative. Um, we're going to play some songs that uh, I think are pretty relevant to what the work that they do and everything that's going on right now in our country. Uh, the first one is called Campesino, and uh, it, it just, you know, it gives homage uh, to the Campesino, the field workers who who pick the crops and basically feed us, you know, and um, make, you know, our, our lives possible. So, and, and especially right now during these really trying times during COVID, uh, you know, they cannot be thanked enough. So, this is Campesino. Tell, but it, it really has to do with a subject that's really near and dear to, to us, um, and it has to do with immigration. Uh, this song is called Al Rato Cruzamos la Frontera. Here we go.
cielo Me perdió en la oscuridad Fue a los dos buscando y su sabiduría Fuerte el negrito guapo Y yo como por mi afuera Y hasta un tiempo Por esa voz va a ser de mi mano When he came out, he was not the same. There was too much baggage he brought from Rikers with him. The memory of beatings, starvation. There was times when he wasn't even allowed to take a shower for two weeks. He was angry. He started getting real paranoid. And his life just spiraled from that. My name is Venita Browder, and I'm the mother of Khalif Browder. Khalif was on his way home. A police car stopped, and I'm assuming the guy who made the complaint was in the car and told the police that Khalif had robbed him of a backpack. Khalif kept saying, I don't know this guy, I didn't rob him. He was told that they were gonna just go to the precinct to kind of sort things out. Well, that sorting out took three years. We went to court, we had a legal aid. And the legal aid told me from the beginning that it was a BS case. He said, don't worry about it, it's a BS case. But meanwhile, my son is being held at Rikers. He would tell me things when I would visit him about being beat. He told me, Ma, I gotta fight. If I don't, they're gonna think I'm soft, I gotta fight. All it did for Khalif was get him in more trouble and more days in solitary. Imagine being locked up 23 hours a day. This is your life. Four walls, that's it. He couldn't take it. They told him, we're gonna break you. That's what they told my baby, that they're gonna break him. 
And in reality, they did. At first, you could see he was relieved, that he was home, he could do what he wanted. He started Bronx Community, and he was doing okay, but then, I mean, he was really out of it, and he couldn't keep it up. He quit. He felt that everybody was out to get him. Everybody was a police plant. He stopped speaking to friends. He would get real angry, and then there were times where he would just this look would come over him and he would just like stare. It was a Saturday morning. It was just me and Khalif. And I hear him upstairs doing all this moving around. And I'm like, maybe Khalif is positioning the furniture to get comfortable. And I didn't pay attention because when Khalif is upset, he pace, he paces. Then all of a sudden, I heard this boom. I run upstairs. I didn't see anything. I ran into the next room, and the air, the air conditioning cover was kicked out, and I just saw something hanging. I ran back downstairs, and as I opened the backyard door, Khalif was hanging there. I miss my son. I miss him so much.
Hey y'all, this is Rev Sinister from Hub City Stompers at the Dirty Jersey. And we're glad to be part of the Punks for Justice virtual fest uh, put on by the Equal Justice Initiative. We're always down to lend a hand to anyone who's looking to right the wrongs. We may not be able to protect you from the filth you're about to hear from us, but we can all protect each other from from the COVID filth by just wearing one of these things, holding it down. I want to play live shows again badly, but, but I'm, I'm going to wait till this passes and let's all do what we got to do so we can get back to real live music. I'd, I'd much rather be playing this fest in person than, than having to do it online, but here we are. So uh, enjoy these couple of tunes from your favorite Dirty Jersey ska band, Hub City Stompers. If you want to check out more of our stuff, our, our Facebook page is the best way to peep out any information you need. And uh, we'll be uh, releasing some more music later and uh, putting out some videos. So, so, so keep in touch. And hopefully we'll see you all on the road very soon. Catch you later. Okay, I'm hitting record again. Fucker.
Hi again, it's me, Sarah, organizer of the Punks for Justice event. I hope you enjoyed all that amazing music. Again, thank you so much to all the performers who submitted videos. I think I forgot to mention in the beginning, but all of them agreed to do this for free because they felt it was really important to try to raise money for EJI. And um, to, I am ever grateful for that, but it also means it's extra important that we go buy their merch and buy their music and uh, find other ways to support them. So if you haven't done it yet, please go check them out. I'm gonna leave this video up on YouTube when it's all over for those who missed it. They can come back and watch or you can even go back and look at the links if you need them. Uh, and then finally, thanks to those who donated today for the Equal Justice Initiative. I'm gonna leave that fundraiser up for a little bit too so you still have time to go and chip in something but thank you so much to all of you i really really appreciate you and i hope that i get to see you again soon actually at real shows <laughs> uh all right i'm super psyched for the final performer today and i hope you are too so thanks so much hi my name is mike park and um I'm very excited to be part of this fundraiser for the Equal Justice Initiative, uh, an organization that's been together for more than 40 years now, um, an organization that's been providing legal representation for marginalized people. And uh, during this time in history where I think we all as people with compassion have been uh, distraught, I think is the most kind word to use at the... Um, state of our country and uh, we truly need to see a reform in a uh, criminal justice system. And so uh, thank you again for letting me be part of this event and I'm just going to play one song for you. Um, it's called Asian Prodigy and it's just about growing up with strict Asian parents uh, who's only goal for you is to become a success when all you want to do is play music and listen to punk rock. I don't want to be a doctor There are things I need to share Can you treat me like a person? There are things I need to share I want you to love me Sharing all your love with me Sorry, I can't be your Asian prodigy. I don't want to be a lawyer There are things I need to share Can you treat me like a person? There are things I need to share I want you to love me Sharing all your love with me Sorry, I can't be your Asian prodigy. I have thoughts in my mind, the things I need to share. The thoughts in my mind, the things I need to share. The thoughts in my mind, the things I need to share.
I don't want to be a doctor There are things I need to share Can you treat me like a person? There are things I need to share I want you to love me Share now your love with me Sorry I can't be your Asian prodigy I have thoughts of my mind Things I need to share Thoughts in my mind Things I need to share Thoughts in my mind Things I need to share I want you to love me Sharing all your love with me Sorry I can't be Eurasian prodigy Thanks again. Peace.